about very historical sites which have to do with twins, right? So according to the Nigerian history, some tribes in Nigeria see the birth of twin as abominable. So hence the killing of twin. Now this is very prevalent, particularly in Calabar. And behind me is a statue of the lady who actually stopped the killing of twin, Mary Celeste. So let's do a little history background about who this lady is and you know how she came to Nigeria, particularly here in Calabar, and how she managed to stop the killing of twins. Meet the lady who stopped the killing of twins in Nigeria. The lady's name is Mary Slesson. She had bright blue eyes and was red-haired. She was a Scottish missionary assigned to the ethnic land, Calabar, Nigeria, in 1876 at age 28. The birth of twins was seen as an evil cause among the ethnic people. Natives feared that the father of one of the babies was an evil spirit and that the mother was guilty of a grievous sin. The ethnic people often abandoned the twin babies in the bush. Mary Slesso adopted all the abandoned babies she found and cared for them at the mission house. She successfully stopped the killing of twins in Calabar after so many obstacles. Mary Slesso spent her years in Calabar preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. She preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. She learned the ethnic language and learned how to eat their food. For the last years of her life, Slesso had fevers at intervals from malaria while in Calabar. The fevers weakened Slesso greatly that she was no longer able to work. So she had to be pushed in a hand cart. Slesso finally died on January 13th. 1915 at age 66. Today, Mary's lesson is known worldwide and her legacy is remembered all over Nigeria and Scotland. Lesso has so many things attributed to her works. She was the first lady to be put in front of the 10 pound note of the Scottish Slidestal Bank that is depicted while holding children in her arms with a map of some parts of Calabar. Mary Slesso also has several monuments in her name, like a road in Calabar, which we are standing right now, a roundabout in Calabar, as well as the church and statues of Slesso carrying twins are at various locations in Calabar. And this is the location right here in Calabar. Thank you. person had to come and stop something like that in Africa just in a few minutes before we begin your mic is on mute your mic is on mute yeah sorry about that yes, go yes. On. actually I was going to talk about that because I wanted to talk about the intentions of um, her actually coming to Nigeria right which has to do with um, converting um, Nigerians to become Christian because that was her original aim. She was sent because she was a missionary sent to Nigeria to actually convert Nigerians to Christians. Um, not minding the fact that we actually have our own tradition, culture, and spirituality. So I wanted to actually uh, talk about the intentions of Mary Slesso because here in Nigeria she's been seen as this hero um, that actually stopped the killing of twins, and um, she's depicted as, you know, this um, amazing hero. But no one is talking about her initial intentions of actually coming to Nigeria and the aim um, why she was there. So that's really the topic I really want. That's a separate topic. I don't really want to go deep into it because I would definitely be covering that, you know, on my platform, you know, because um, I think that's a history that is neglecting or some logical mm. questions that no one is actually asking. You understand? Because um, we don't ask questions. They just tell mm. us stories and we just believe it, you know, here. So because we need to actually find what actually transpired, what, you know, led to this point, you know, 
And all we are hearing is that is this hero, white hero, that actually came and stopped the killing of tweets. You know, mm. so uh, we will go deep into it. Wow, wonderful. I'll hand it over to uh, Brother Gilbert. Brother Gilbert, over to you. All right. Once more, thanks everybody tonight for joining us. And special thanks to African Unite, Uni, Uni, United Force. I don't know if it's United or Unite United Force. Force. African, yeah. African Unite Force. Unite Force, okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Special thanks to you for being our special guest today. So, um, without much time um, of wasting, for example, we would like to ask you, before we begin, some very common, simple questions. Will you just tell us about uh, what Africa United Force is? I mean, the name African United Force, you know, I actually thought of it because um, when I was in Europe, I didn't know um, how important Africa was all about. I didn't know how important being African is. Now, when I started seeing certain things around me, and then I started seeing how they are being depicted in the media and how, you know, um, we are being misrepresented all the time, you know, because actually um, I live, I, I, I schooled in Russia as well. So um, in, in, that, uh, um, in, in some of the news and um, the way they depict Africa and what they say because I, I saw this video where two Russians they actually went to this is what transpired um inspired me to do um to be on YouTube and talk about um Africa and us as a people. So when I saw these two ladies they went to Ghana and um they went straight to the slum and they started talking about Ghana being a, a slum that look at how people are living. They're, they're standing in the slum and talking about this and they were speaking it in Russian because I could understand Russian. And uh, it was very, very disturbing because I was asking the question, if they, if they're coming into the country as tourists, why, do they, why don't they go to tourist sites and, and places like that? Now they are always showing to their people and these are people that have millions of followers, right? So they are showing to their people that Africa is a is, is slum. And they are telling them and giving them this false narrative, which is really, really bad. And I'm like, if we are going to sit and be quiet and allow other people to travel all the way and come to our various countries or our country, because if I say various countries, I'm using a colonial term, right? To come and tell our stories or tell um, a story that fits their narrative then i mean they don't have no issue i think the problem is us and i say we need to do something about it because i'm sick and tired of mainstream media representing us and giving this false narrative about africa because i know very well many slums in europe where i live and places like that you know there are lots of slums so no one is allowed to film no one is allowed to portray these things not especially if you are an immigrant or you know a foreign so i said why would our government allow such things to happen in africa because no one cares it's high time we start caring not because we're in position of office but as an individual because africa is hard to us like africa we take africa to heart and is a responsibility to actually defend stand up and speak for our continent africa so i had to um open uh, uh to be on, on on youtube i i that inspired me to to be on youtube and actually give the narrative of africa from an african perspective and not from a european construct and that's what really inspired me to actually you know um do that because I, I thought that it is high time the narrative change and um, Africans should start telling their own story stories rather All right. thank, you. thank you that's very interesting especially as you mentioned something there that um, uh, that you thought of it as an at, at an individual level instead of 
these are waiting on the leadership, the current leadership to do something. You thought of it at an individual level. I think that is something very, very interesting and important in the sense that if everybody could like chip in his own, his or her own little effort, just like you are doing, that, that would do that would go a long way. So another question I could, I, I think our listener might want to know is that um, having seen seen um, those images and how things are being portrayed. Uh, what do you have in mind, for example, like a vision? How do you, how do you see in the future, like in the what period of time, maybe five years, ten okay. years? How do you see the continent to be, be perceived, for example? I mean, uh, in the next ten, uh, 10 years, it's, just, it's actually small for a massive change to happen because. Um, the change is actually happening, but although it's in a very uh, uh, slow space, but at least it's happening, which is very important. Now, the thing is, we need more people, you know, individual people who actually are we that we need to educate. You understand? Because if we are talking about change, change has to do with the mindset, how we see ourselves and how we see our continent. Because for a lot of people, Africa is just um, a tourist site where they just, I, I, this, this is now to Africans, right? I'm talking to Africans. Africans see Africa as a tourist site. So any dumping ground where only when, you know, they are old for African in the diaspora, only when they are old, shrunk and useless up here, you know, that's when they come back to Africa, you know, to come and retire meaning they have spent most of their youth age and, and, and time they've given it they've given their strength their energy their intellect to europe and the west so only when they're coming back here they are coming to give their waning years back to africa and africa does not deserve you know uh people who are already dying and close to their grave we need strong young energetic africans who can actually change the narrative of africa and actually work and invest here in africa so i mean if we see africa as home then a lot of things will begin to change it will no longer be chasing the paper money which is actually you know not uh, um which is actually um how do i put it an empty cloud because we have the greatest wealth here in africa every other continent should be running to africa and not the other way around because we don't understand the massive and ms wealth that we have here in africa so we see our young and our, our youth they are running to europe and the west and then leaving africa you know in in in, in this in this uh, bad shape you know because no one is going to fix it for us we need to do the job and fix it for ourselves so in the next five, 10 years, it's too small for this change to happen. This change will happen when we start changing our educational system, when we start you know, uh, targeting the younger minds because this, this um, uh, um, older mind, is, trust me, it's difficult to work with them. You know, it's just crazy. But if we can actually target them young and begin to educate them ourselves, now listen to this ourselves, because we have become so lazy that we now allow strangers to educate our children because i was one of those went to europe to get educated not really educated to be brainwashed in the process i found myself because their reality hits with me and i begin i saw how you know we are treated i saw how you know things are not you know things are not the same and i'm like i cannot be in a strange land or in a stranger's land and then think that I will be respected, I will be treated better, I will be all of those things. I have to go back to my own home. And that is the only place I can fix it. If I fix it, even strangers will respect me. But I cannot be in a stranger's house and expect them to treat me as a king or as a queen, you know, because it's not my home. I need to go and fix my home or quench the fire, if at all, my house is on fire or my home is on fire. I will not want to a friend's house and allow my house to burn 
I have to go and, and, and quench the fire. And this is what we all need to do. So that space of time is literally small. We need more Africans that will come together and actually you know, educate and sharpen our minds because we need to start asking logical questions. We need to start you know, um, participating in the affairs of Africans. We need to start you know, talking about our past, you know, what actually happened and how we can actually change the future through navigating uh, our, our way from, from the past all the way to the, to, to the future. And the future is now. So if we, are on, if we are unable to do these things, because education is very, very important. Like I said, once the people who enslaved us cannot be the same people that will educate us. That's an error on, on its own. Because when your oppressors are educating you, it is not education, it is more brainwashing. More brainwashing. Because this is part of what uh, the whole, uh, this is part of the whole concept of slavery. We need to target the educational system in, in order for us to what? To enslave them, to colonize them. So the educational system was targeted. And now they brought this, set, this type of educational system that is actually brainwashing us and we think that, oh, getting the best a, 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 a diploma or certificate would only be in the West and would only be in America and all of these places. In reality, we are the educated ones and we have our own pattern and ways of educating. But now our parents have now become so lazy, they allow strangers and foreigners to educate their own children for them. So what do you think they are going to impact on them or teach them? Because what they are doing, they are transferring their own knowledge or not literally they're transferring whatever how they want us to think that's what they're transferring to us how they want us to think shaping our minds to fix their narrative so we need african-centered educational system where we teach our children african based absolutely absolutely true absolutely true it is it is absolutely true that the education has to change. The system has to change. Um, uh, as you rightly mentioned, five, ten years is a kind of a short period of time to see a change. Um, for somebody who really wants to see a change, for example, to you, what are some of the changes in, the, in this period of time? Something that if it happens, you could see them as a measure of a change. Do you see set some, something like that? To say okay we expect that even if there is no change so to say but if this can happen this can happen then we could consider it as a change do you have something as such in uh thought or strategies yes absolutely one of the changes that i see is what is happening right now because uh, 10 15 years ago um i don't think that someone from the congo you know south africa and these other African countries can actually come together, sit down, and actually collaborate and start talking about the affairs of Africa and how Africa you know, should grow and what actually affects us. So I think the biggest and greatest change is happening right now on this live stream, us collaborating, talking about how the way forward. This is one of the, this is one of the greatest change that is actually happening. Perhaps you might not see it that way, but this is how I see it. And the second change, or the, the second point I want to make is um, teaching the, the, the younger generation, you understand? So because they captured us young and they actually, you know, enforce their narrative on us. So we need to go back and start catching the young minds, the children, and start educating them with an African-centered curriculum and, and, and centered educational system, you understand? You don't, we don't need too much things to do. Like what I'm doing here in Nigeria, like the, the kids you know, on the street and all of I don't need a school or something like that. Sometimes we just sit under the tree, you know, sit in just, you know, maybe in the church premises or something like that. And I just educate them about history, educate them about their culture and, you know, certain things that, you know, we just sit and just talk. You know, and then I educate them and then I show them certain images and, and, and stuff like that about themselves, their past, their history and uh, what and how to think as, as leaders and how to be logical, you know, because what we are doing on the continent of Africa, we're actually raising religious uh, uh, leaders, more of religious leaders and not actual leaders that will actually uh, uh, change 
you know, world class leaders that will actually make changes. So you see, little kids are actually now pastors, they're actually reverend, they're all of these things. And when our children are already programmed to think that way or brainwashed to think that way, it is almost impossible because if you want to talk about the colonial, uh, uh, um, the colonial uh, um, ideologies that were forced on us, those leaders, little leaders, which uh, who are supposed to be the future generation, they will be the one to fight you. Why? Because we've neglected, we neglected the, to do the right thing, educating them, teaching them ourselves. We are raising them or we, are, we allow the system that raised our, our, our ancestors, um, not our forefathers, and is raising us this generation to raise these children. So those of us who are woke and are willing to make change, we need to educate our children by ourselves and not allow this deported colonial system of education to keep brainwashing our children. That's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Uh, you mentioned something very interesting about logic, the logical thinking of, 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 of children. Logical thinking of children. Um, and uh, this goes, this somehow related with the education that exists. Sorry, I have a call here and um, I have to stop it. Okay. Uh, sorry for that disturbance. Uh, you mentioned something about logical thinking, and this goes with the kind of system, the system of education that we have. In your own opinion, uh, what what could be some of the strategies that could be taken to to make to see that the existing educational system accepts, let's say, some of these changes that we are proposing? You no, know, we don't. We as individuals, we, we can do what we are doing right now, but we don't have that power, let's say, to change the education system but if we were to do it or to contribute to it do you have something in mind you think could be done for example uh, that's what i'm saying like um we can all say we don't have the power but we do have the power because the power is in the hands of the people until we realize that then we keep giving you know uh, our rights and our power to our representatives our representatives are not the leaders the leaders are the people so the people elected or appointed representatives to represent them so meaning they are like servants that are working for us we are the people with the power that should make the changes so the changes will come from us and not from the representatives now what i'm saying in essence is that yes we might not have that uh, uh um power right now because a lot of us don't understand that we really have the power to do that Hence, we will, we, will not, uh, we will not see that we have the power. So as an individual, we can actually be educating the children around us, the people, you know, the kids around us, your friends, you know, talk about these things to them. Talk to parents, you know, uh, around you that, you know, engage, because I like to engage in conversations like this, you know, I like to talk to them on the streets. I like to hear their perspective, I like to know, and I like to ship in my own perspective and, 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 and suggestions. To them and say how about this way how about this way what do you think about this and, and and that you know and then i like to challenge their thoughts you know they might not like it but there are certain truths that they cannot deny so um if the change can happen with us as an individual but it will be better as a collective but from now we can start from as we can start uh, as an individual what are you doing in your own little space? What are you doing to change what is around you? Because if you look at it, the government is you and I. So in your place of work or what, whatever thing, place of work I mean, what you, what you do, the day-to-day -day life, the people you meet, what is the impact that you make on their lives? And you know, how do you serve the people? You know, how do you educate them? How do you do these things? You know, this is what government or governance is all about. So we should take it as an individual thing that we are leaders and we need to represent and do the right thing. So one of the strategies is us educating the people around us and be concerned. Don't say it is none of my business. Don't say, you know, let them do what they want to do because if they do what they want to do, it will definitely affect you and it will affect the future generation, which is your children. So we should take into consideration what your neighbors are doing, you know, what your family members are doing, 
and which will start you know, proposing conversations like this that will actually bring about the change. Perhaps they've not thought about it this way, but if you propose this conversation and then we start having conversations like this, and then we take it to, to a, a, a higher scale or upper scale where we are doing what we are doing, you know, inviting people, you know, and talking about, you know, the issues, then I do believe that, you know, it will definitely work. It will definitely work. So the educational system is not like the, the, the four corners of a university or, you know, a, a school like that, you know, because that's just the, the concept of what the colonialists. Education can be through traveling, education can be through a, a, a excursion, it can be through a lot of things, you know, and then we start teaching the people around us, you know, if each and every one of us can do that, then there will be change. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very interesting you mentioned that uh, the edu education is not all about the four walls of the school or the university ladder or so, because that's the colonial mindset. Very true, very true, something to, to take note of. Um, to Mr. Avi, wondering if you have something to add. Oh yeah, thank you so much, Brother Gibbet. I was really impressed with, with Ms. Chineri's uh, response to the, to the questions. And she really uh, mentions three two important strategies, which is collaboration and uh, education. You know, we Africans don't like to work with each other. I don't know why. So that's a very good point that she has mentioned. Ms. Chinere, you know, I was going through some of the contents that you, 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 you always put out on your page. And you know, people like you and, and us, they don't like the kind of uh, information that we share because we're waking up like a group of people. And many times you see they have introduced this thing in YouTube like um, strikes. If you share a video, it does not meet the community guidelines to give you a strike. And once you meet three strikes, you're out. I do. I, I, do, I, have, I, I do have. I do have. I personally, at relevant, we also have. I think about two strikes. It means if we put one more video about COVID, we are gone forever. So, what do you have to say about censorship? You know, because about most of the platform, yes, yes, regarding how they tend to censor uh, information that wakes people up. Well. Um, it has to do with who owns the platform and you know who owns the the show runs the show <laughs> so that's how i i see it and this should not be something that we should take uh, in a negative way but rather it should compel us to even do more research and find ways on how we can actually create and make our own platforms where uh, we can actually be free and not be censored because i do believe that freedom of speech you know should be truly free and not uh, uh, be censored by anyone because it's, it's our human right to have that. But um, whereby, you know, certain things are not allowed um, to be talked about, you know, even if it is hurting us and it's killing us, we are not allowed to say these things, we are not allowed to, to talk the way we should talk. Now they are programming us to speak in a particular way, you know, think in a particular way, talk in a particular way, you know, that suits their narrative anything outside that you know you're being censored so I, I i take it as a challenge and i'm not upset about it you know because i do believe that first of all uh, um, they gave me the opportunity to be heard and to be you know to be seen on their platform so which i am actually you know grateful for that but then um, i think that as africans we need our own platforms and uh, instead of um complaining we should rather think of solution and what are the solutions we need to get to work and make our own platforms where we can actually be truly free and express ourselves as Africans. That's what I can say. Thank you very much. Wow, absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Um, we'll be jumping to collaboration between African United Force and Zoloban to how we can work together. And then uh, we'll jump into the questions. We'll leave the audience out, uh, to answer some to, to ask some questions. I wanted to know, I've seen you so much interest in, in, in showing the beautiful places in Nigeria. Do you have some sort of passion for tourism or any plans to really show us the beauty yeah. of Africa? Absolutely. Um, I'm actually um, working on a tourist uh, company, which will be uh, 
I think that should be happening from next year. That's why I went to Calabar to actually do some promotional video, you know, so people can be able to see because I'm, I'm pretty much about nature and all of those kinds. So because I do believe that we, we should connect back to our connect back to ourselves. Connecting back to ourselves meaning connecting back to nature. So we are busy um, wealth based on modern technologies and all of that, which I'm not saying all of it is wrong or all of it is bad because, you know, if it is not for modern technology like this, uh, perhaps we will not be talking on this live stream the way we are right now. The certain things are, are nice, they are good, but that should not mean that we should totally ignore and forget where we are coming from or our true essence as as a people which is nature so um that's why i actually went to calabar so um our my tourist uh, company with two other um, um women african-american ladies so we are collaborating because i do believe in collaboration because if we do work together we can actually uh, um, make change you understand that's the mindset of the chinese the Chinese believe in group economies, and that's why they are building very fast, and they are, you know, up there. So, but we are starting to have, or we already have this individualistic mindset, which is going to take us um, a long time to get to where we really want to go. So, if we can be working together, collaborating together, and actually, you know, doing things to see that to save time to be faster, and uh, and all of that. So that's what we're actually doing. So we're actually focusing on tourism. And it's not going to be just only in Nigeria. So we'll be moving it to different African uh, um, countries, you know, just for the purpose of this video. I'm going to mention that because Africa is a country, the colonialists, they make it a continent where um, a continent have various countries in it. But prior before then, Africa used to be a country that you know you can actually navigate your way and go wherever you want to go without any you know transit or border or something like that where they ask you for visa and, and and stuff like that you know so all of these things are modernization uh which is actually um propelled by the europeanists right so um these are the things that needs to change once we begin to see ourselves you know from the perspective of africa of africa then a lot of things will change. Once we do, we do know, or we no longer see the borders and see ourselves from its originality, because there wasn't a border before, before 1884 to 1885, when 18 European nations they come to, they came together, and then um, in Berlin to actually uh, craft Africa to their various uh, um, piece of cake. You know, and that's why you have the Congo, you have Nigeria, you have all of these places. But I do not see everyone living in these various places like that. I see them as one and the same, and I see them as African. I don't see them based on the border. I see them based on the concept that we were Africans, meaning we were a country with different beautiful tribes culture that you know but still in in the same and one essence meaning everything is relatable everything is the same everything is spiritual everything is just just we operate differently in a different uh, um uh, um how do i put it strengths that's just how i see it wow absolutely beautiful Ms. Chinere. there's a video that you made and you said uh dear african stop calling me madame it i have a name <laughs> can you tell us more about that no, the thing is that um, I, 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 I actually question a lot of things. I challenge everything and I question everything. And I don't go by the European definitions of things. I actually redefine things for myself. And now, when in Nigeria here, they normally call you madam, you know, for them and, and sir, and all of these things, because most Nigerians, they love title, you know, title, they love it a lot. And um, when you look at this title, I have a name. I have a name because if we go back to our, our, our way, our ways as Africans, we were always addressed by our names. Respect does not equate madam or sir. Or when you bend your head like this or bow before me, it does not mean respect. That's not respect. You can do all of those things and still disrespect me, you know, with your actions. So the fact that you call me madam and you call me uh, um, this thing, that's, that's a British English. 10. And now we have just, you know, we have just taken it 
and now we are forgetting you know some some people they, they don't they no longer you know know their names anymore i see that no one is interested in knowing my name they're only calling madame 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 everywhere i'm like i'm not madame i have a name you need to address me by my name because i do believe that for our ancestors or for my parents to call me the name they did call me names are very very powerful and that's why when the colonials they came the first thing they did was to change our names they changed our names and that's why i had to rechange my name from the english one to the, to a more traditional native one you know because i do believe that the english name is not working for me but my traditional name definitely will work for me because africa responds to my traditional name and africa recognizes my traditional name every other colonial foreign names they don't recognize and it's not working it, it will not work mm -hmm. on the soil and that's why i'm very particular when you address me from a british perspective calling me miss madam and all of these things i have to correct you and i said because i think it is uh, um, very disrespectful to address me like that so if you should know you should perhaps if you're close to me you should address me by my name hmm. very interesting mr Neri. we'll be going into our session of our questions from the from, from the from the panels uh, we, we just wanted to know, Mr. Neri, what are some of the ways we can collaborate with Africa Unite Force? Because at Olavantu, we have a YouTube page, a Facebook page, we have Instagram, and we often do lectures on Sundays. So what are some of the ways we can collaborate to make sure that um, the people that watch us begin to watch you as well? Because you're also waking up the conscience of Africans. How can we collaborate? What are some of the ways that you can propose for us to collaborate, to even reach a larger audience, to really wake up our Africans and also really work harder together in what you mentioned, teaching the young generation African-centered education. What are some of the ways? And then after that, we we'll also maybe give a word to one of our leaders, where is here to say a few words, and then we'll jump into the section of uh, the questions and answers, and then we'll come to a close. Yeah, Mr. Neri. Well, um some of the ways where we can actually collaborate um, is to work with like-minded people. You know, um, when we see like-minded people, we should definitely um, work with them and um, see how we can uplift each other and, and support. We should be more supportive, you know, uh, and um, see how we can actually encourage, you know, if someone is doing something that you think it is um, commendable, something that you think we should support. However you can, you have to, you should, we should support. But um, for talking about larger audience, um, see, I said we have to be very dramatic because that's what, you know, strives, drama. So you see, when you are dramatic and all of that, you know, the views and, you know, the audience, people are just coming in and that's how you reach the larger audience. But if you're talking the way you're talking right now and stuff like that, the audience will be very, very small and, people would not want to listen or people would not want to, you know, to hear what you're saying. But just do one dramatic, crazy things and see what is going to go, what is going to happen. You know, and that makes me to think, you know, how did we get to that point where it takes drama and craziness to get the attention of our people? It means that, you know, there's a call for attention. Something is not right. Something is wrong somewhere. It does the mindset. The mindset of we have to, we have to push negativity, drama, for you to be able to capture the attention of, our, of Africans, because Africans are not interested in the affairs of Africa. You know, they are more interested about all of this is until you say something that hits them or you say something that, you know, mm. is offended about that challenge their thoughts. And then, you know, they want to respond, you know, because of that, you know, they are triggered and they want to respond very swiftly. And then you see, and then you begin, because that's how I begin to understand uh, um, the level at which we are right now. So I think that we should support each other however we can, whenever we can, and um, that's how we can actually um, work together. And then we should spread the message, right? You know, when we are doing something like that, you see something that's interesting, why don't you share it? Share it on your platform, share it with friends and families, tell them to share it. Tell them to share the video. Let us begin to mm. reach out to the people because it is more of the people it is not it's not more about the views and the likes you see but if the the, the views are more then we are reaching a larger audience if each and every one of us just that even on youtube right 
the YouTube bus African Center, they are very selfish and you know it's difficult to work together. That's just the honest truth. When someone and, and it's full of jealousy, you know, this one stabbing, this one, this one talking about this one, you know, bringing each other down and fighting, that will not help us to go anywhere. So if we can actually work together, support each other, promote each other, and do what we are doing, then you will see that it will definitely that's why you know I said I'm not a pan Africanist. No one should address me as a pan Africanist because I don't understand being a pan Africanist mm. and we cannot we cannot even work together on YouTube. We cannot like the YouTubers who come who claims to be one, they can, they are not even united on YouTube to show that example. Then what exactly are you sitting now for 10, 15 hours talking about, you know, or selling to the audience when we cannot actually do these little things that shows unity among ourselves? You're hurting, you're you're having grudges on this one, you know, you know, all those crazy things. So what I think mm. is that I prefer to work with like-minded people and 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 that's me. And when I see something that is worth sharing, I do share it, you know. When I see videos that we, you know, definitely need to share, I share it. And then I say, look, let's um, let's work together, you know, because that's the only way we can actually make a change. That's the only way. Wow, that's beautiful. Brother, here you heard Miss, Miss Chinere. She said, work with like-minded people, encourage and support, spread the message, more about the people and not the views and the likes. What do you have to say, Brother, here? Yeah, thank you, Brother Avi. Uh, the one who comes to teach is always welcome. Um, yeah, thank you very much to the sister. Uh, very uh, inspiring and uh, very motivating as well. It's good to know that there are other Africans on the continent which, uh, like we say, are, are like-minded like ourselves, which, um, you know, uh, you know, just, just trying to share the truth. I, I think... Um, I think we, we need to be truthful with ourselves. I think we need to be honest with ourselves. And, you know, it, it's, it's okay to say, you know, I went to school and I was taught a certain, um, you know, curriculum, um, you know, but the narrative was fed. And we need to be honest with ourselves and say, hey, um, you know, what we were taught, the, the entire concept of a classroom and everyone sitting in a particular, uh, you know, manner or being taught in a certain way, um, you know, everything about that entire system was constructed by um, the Eurasians who came and colonized Africa. So even in the classrooms, we're not truthful in how we're teaching ourselves. And, and we need to be cognizant of that. And we need to concede that for ourselves and be truthful with ourselves that that is our history. That's where we come from. And what do we want to do about it? And what do we want to and how do we want to ensure that some of our other brothers and sisters across the continent also understand that fact and not just you know, hear it and say, oh, yes, but that was in the past, but say, that's our past, um, you know, even though we may not have been on those slave ships, uh, but that's our history, um, and, you know, and the, the life we're living today is a product of the history that the, our forefathers and ancestors went through, and, and, that's, and that is why we are where we are. Um, and again, so thank you very much for that, um, you know, for that engagement. Um, you know, we, we are like-minded and we want to work together some more um, and we look forward to engaging with you some more as well um, and, and spread the word. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, I think we have a question from Brother, Brother Gilbert and then we'll jump into the panels uh, um, for their questions as well. Brother Gilbert. Yeah, thank you very much again. Uh, I'm quite excited with uh, with uh, the conversation that's going, with the conversation that's going on, and uh, just like um, Africa Unite Force mentioned, it is difficult for us to work together, and uh, that can be traced back to the system of education, just like uh, as I mentioned, everything is a construct was designed such that we, we should find it difficult to work with one another. We should compete. Instead of instead of helping each other, we should be competing. So this is something that once we are able to realize it, it's easy for us to work against it. So I'm excited to know to discover that we are also discovering it or rediscovering it so that we can work uh, together. Thank you very much. I have a question. I don't know if um, I'm struggling with the chat. Yes. With the, this thing. 
Yeah, brother. Brother Peace is from Nigeria, uh, amazing place of Nigeria as well. Brother Peace, jump in, yes. Wow, finally. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> I'm really happy to to meet my sister. Um, uh, sorry, I uh, African Unite Force. Um, firstly, I want to, I am very, very impressed that at least, um, because from Nigeria, when you, when you explain this concept of uh, African uniting and um, the old stuff of awakening Africans and um, so on and so forth, and everything about Africa is like a strange, sorry, it's like a strange idea to us in Africa because already we have a lot of political issues to battle with. And, um, and I know that's the case, you know, almost every African country and one of the things, because I, uh, like, I also, um, um, I'm also involved in um, awakening Africans and trying my best to, like, um, um, help our people go through this, um, this colonialism mindset and um, just overcome it. Um, one of the challenges is convincing people that at least they are, we are already, you know, because even even in a group i have a i have a i have a community and even in the community i am struggling with educating my people that look we are we are under a colonized under a colonization uh, a, a modern kind of colonization look we are under this educational system is enslaving us this um and this is i'm struggling with um explaining to them because for some times ago, uh, there is one of my, because most of my guys are students, there is one of my guys that study um, philosophy in the popular university, or Bafumi Awolowo University, and he studies philosophy. And he was asking me a question on philosophy that asked, can we prove that Africans have philosophy? Because what they teach in school is that Africa does not have philosophy. That's what they teach them in school. And he was asked to portray that, that Africa does not our philosophy and i was actually trying to explain it to him and he couldn't get that um i was like philosophy is life how will you say people does not have philosophy and that is just one of the things because there are lots of things that has been we've been made to believe that it's hard to actually had a paradigm shift so what myself somebody like me struggle with is educating the people you understand like trying to trying to make the people understand that look there is an issue there is an issue and um although i know we might also have a similar um this thing but i don't know how do you how do you tackle this kind of um this challenge or you don't do you do you face um this kind of challenge as well um peace um thank you very much um from ac for actually um talking about this challenge it's very prevalent i don't know particularly uh, because i'm in nigeria we are in, you, you you stated it very you know correctly now one of the issues because i think that most of us here were not trained to be logical and to ask logical questions and now the worst thing that happened to us as a people was the fact that our history was totally eradicated. And in place of history, the Nigerian history, they, 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 they replace it with religious... Um, uh, studies, yeah. With, with religious uh, um, studies or with religious knowledge. Now, that in itself um, is, is very... Um, is the greatest evil on the planet or to humanity. The greatest evil is when you take the identity of people away from them and you give them false identity. Now, what Africans or Nigerians are running with, the mindset, is a false identity which they are willing and ready to sacrifice their life for and die for. Now, it is very difficult to work with a lot or to educate or to have a, a simple conversation with a lot of them as regards our history because they never taught them. They don't understand. Mm. All they understand is the religious aspect. So I go with them from the religious perspective. 
And I said, okay, wow. let's come down to your religious perspective and I ask them logical questions. You know, because I was having a conversation with one of those and they were telling me, they, you know, the women are not supposed to talk in church, the women are not supposed to do this and all of this. And then I said, because the men are the leaders, the men are these, you know, the men came before the women. And I said, okay, let's be logical now. And let me ask you logical question. If you have a brain, you will think logically and not follow some sort of book that was written because some of our culture and the Bible that depicts women, I, this is just my opinion. I do believe the men, they wrote it without the concept of the women. You know, they just put all those things, all those nonsense there. And I said to him, I said, okay, did the woman come from the rib of a man? He said, yes. Now, because the book, I said, how did you get that information? He said, because the holy book told him that. I said, the holy book. So you would prefer to believe a book more than nature. I said, now let's go back to nature because that, is, that should be your Bible. Why are you believing something that, you know, it's not logical, you know, it's not natural. Nature teaches you and show you something, but then you choose to believe something otherwise. I said, let's come look at nature. Now, I said, do men have womb? He said, no. I said, how is it possible that a, a woman comes out of a man when in nature and in reality, in the day-to-day -day life, man and woman, they come out of a woman? And only the African woman metropondal DNA is traced back to every other race. Every man is a woman in their mother's womb before, you know, you were, you were, you know, you became a man. And I said, it's, there's no way that a man came before a woman or was conceived before a woman because the woman is mm. life. She has womb. The mm. womb is the thing that produces life. That is life. The tree of life is mm. not that tree that you went and you ate apple. The tree of life is the womb of a woman mm. because she gives life. Mm. So he paused for a minute and he was thinking and all of these things. And I said, are you going to dispute nature with your, mm. you know, with this, um, uh, how, how do I call it, with this illusion that was taught to you, or you're actually going to use your brain and think logically and look around you and see what is happening? Mm. And then he couldn't know how to answer. Because when I see that this is the field that they are in, religious, religion, I go with them from the perspective of religion and we begin to have conversation about that religious thing and wow. then from there That's... we go to okay. other aspects you know because i have to come down to the level where they are and I, I i want to speak the language that they will understand because i don't want to convince anybody about anything because it's, you're just going to add, i'm not i don't have that time to waste i wouldn't waste, waste my time for anybody if you cannot see that information is out there if you want to die ignorance your choice I am not, mm. it's not my responsibility to change you, you know, I can make you or I can tell you to see or to look. I'm not going to force you or take you to the river, but I'm not forcing you to drink no water. You will decide whether you want to drink the water yourself or not. Wow. Yeah, I'm talking about religion. Can I go? Yeah, talking about religion, you know, you are that Nigeria is a very religious sensitive country and um, one of the things you don't really really um you can have a friend that you talk I have a friend that is of other religion we've been friends for seven years and is my best friend actually um but we don't we never talk about religion you know because I know he's a very religious person having a background of the north not Nigeria and uh, I met him in North because I schooled in the North. I know you um, with the house in the house, you understand. So um, it's a very hard conversation to have when it comes to religion, especially in those in those sides. I understand your perspective, and I at at time most of the time I try to use the um, use the method as well, especially when I'm talking to my fellow um, because I practice Christianity here yeah? and when I'm speaking to people that um, are Christians as well I start to um, start my conversation from there you understand 
but um when i i can i can talk i can tackle christianity with christians as a christian it will still be accessible somehow but i can't tackle it as a christian or as a, as somebody that you see as a christian coming from a christian family to to muslims you understand i can't tackle their own religion being you understand i don't know if you are trying to understand my, yeah you are trying to understand my, so it's a real issue it's a real issue um come and then um again trying to make people understand the balance balance between our culture and religion because all what they see now all what we see is religion in this in this nigeria especially I, um all what we see is religion and even anything if a bit of culture if you put it inside if you bring a bit of culture into your life you see people start questioning you you understand people start questioning you and to the extent that um they will even see see you as evil if you are too cultural they will, people will even yes. be scared of you they, they may blackmail you you understand so um I get, I get i get that a lot you know i get that a lot but i don't back down for nobody because they are not backing down for their religion so i'm not backing down i'm not backing down or reducing my standards to please anybody because here they're already getting used to me they know me already the way i talk is the way i talk you know i'm very very jovial i'm very very uh, uh playful friendly and all of that irrespective of the fact that we have different religious affiliation they see me they tell me that everything our bible says we should do we, 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 you know we see some of these characteristics in you and i said to them everything your bible says you should do i don't see it in you because you don't do it you don't keep to the mm. bible so why are you disturbing me with this bible thing you don't mm. do anything that comes from the bible and i said it's mm. because the bible is not my standard because it, it should not a morals does not come from a book it is something mm. that you know you, you comes from you yeah, you learn on a daily basis. You know what is good and you know what is wrong. So you can, you don't need a book to tell you that. And except just, you know, it's just there to bring worship. So when it comes to uh, religion, they already know my point and uh, my my standpoint of view and where I stand because I'm not backing down for anybody. Whether you like it or not, I don't have a lot of friends because it's difficult to have friends, you know, here. Because mostly they are religious and they will not understand. I'm hearing some noise in the background and I'm a bit distracted. The person needs your mic, please. All right, sorry. Can I ask the last question? Okay. Uh, actually. Yes, yeah, so what um, in, 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 in totality, what I'm saying is that uh, we should be unapologetically. African embrace our culture, whether we are viewed by our own people as evil or something like that, it will take a lot of time for them to understand or get to the level at which we are right now, but that should not mean that we should lower our standard or we should, because of that, forfeit what we stand for, for their foolishness. I, I'm not going to do that, you know, uh, because I know I was once at that position. I used to think like that. I used to behave and act like that. But I also have patience for them because I'm not going to expect change automatically. It's a gradual process. I believe they do listen and I believe they do because when I speak to them, I speak in a way where they would definitely want to hear more and they would definitely be challenged to want to, you know, ask certain pause, think before they actually talk. That's the point where I, I, I'm at. So I, I bring it in a very jovial way. We talk, we laugh and all of these things, you know, but sometimes when I when I do something a little uh, pleasant, um, show some love to somebody, and they tell me the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, you know, oh thank you Jesus, oh, God bless, and all of this. I said then give me back my stuff and then go ask God to give it to you or ask Jesus to do it for you. That's what I said to them. Already they know, so they, they tell me thank you. I say good because you should thank me and not thank some construct of something that is not this thing because I was the person who actually gave it to you already they know me so now they are adjusting their mindset to that because i'm not backing down for them or anybody wonderful wonderful thank you so much Mr. for that beautiful response uh our time with Ms. has come to an end uh, 
Um, if you'd like to know more about Miss Tunu, you can visit her YouTube page. She's always going live. Turn on the, the, the bell and get her live. I always get the live messages but every time she goes live. Subscribe to our channel, everyone who's watching. We just get uh, a one minute um, uh, message from everyone and then uh, Brother Peace said he has the last question. He will ask it at the end and then Mr. Nair will be able to answer it and then close for us for today. We're going to start with, um, uh, we have Ms. Tendai. She joined us. Ms. Tendai, we'd like to say something in a minute before, we, and then we'll have Brother Gilbert. Yes, hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, hi everyone, and hi, Miss Chinere. Uh, it was so good to hear from you. Um, I think what stood out to me is the part when you mentioned the children who you teach um, history once in a while, the ones who you sit them down and teach them the history of Africa once in a while, because as simple as it may sound, it's also so effective, you know, for them to be learning the truth at such a young age. I have a younger brother and a nephew, and I've always been trying to figure out how can I um, approach them as two young kids who are in the system, you know, just like me, you know, and they haven't been exposed to what we know so far. And I don't want them to have to wait until my age, just like me, to learn it. You know, if they can start learning from such a young age, it will be so effective for them. But I never know where to start the conversation in such a way that they'll be able to understand what I mean um, and won't be overwhelming for them, you know. so. I guess it's a question as well, but yeah, if you could just tell me how you approach it when you're talking to those children and where exactly you start with them to make it easy enough for them to understand. Okay. For me, I do love kids a lot because, you know, and I love um, working with kids and playing with kids a lot and all of that. Now, um, I, I, that's where I start from. I start from there because I, I actually uh, bring myself to their age, so they actually think that oh, perhaps you know I'm their age group, but they just have a little bit higher in, in their have knowledge. Now, so um, I do because kids are good with visual, so I, I I use visual, like I have pictures of African um, leaders. I have you know uh, uh, have Africans or, or black. Um, achievers, people who, who has actually achieved a lot of things and, and all of that. So I, I give them that visual, I show them and ask them you know, to begin to think. And then I tell them, I ask them the, the, the questions that they know. And I tell them, what do you think about this? Don't you think that this, uh, um, you know, I, I challenge their thoughts in a way that I want them to be able to think for themselves so that they will not be forced or people should not force their ideologies on them. You know, I ask them questions. We do have conversation. I don't teach in a dogma way where I impose what I think, you know, I tell them to also challenge whatever thing that I'm teaching them. And I tell them, look, whatever thing I say to you, why don't you go and cross check and see if I'm telling you lies or something like that? You know, go and find out, you know, teaching them how to do research, telling them how to question things, teaching them all these things, you know we do have a conversation and it's not this you know kind of dogmatic way of teaching which is what you know the school system is all about you know someone is standing there and giving you instructions and telling you what to do and what not to do if you challenge their thoughts and ideology they see you as somebody that oh so you want to challenge my idea you want to do this and that's where the logical aspect is really lacking so we put this fear in the kids where we don't really have conversation with them we don't answer questions, you know, we, we should be honest to tell them, we don't know, I don't know, but I'm going to um, do more research on this and I will give the answer, you know, later, you know, not acting that we know it all because we are elderly or because we are this, you know, we must come to the, to the place of honesty and so they will begin to believe in us and see things differently. So we need to show them the other version by actually, uh, um, you know, taking them for an excursion, you know, working on, uh, um, you know, like you know, so they are going to uh, um, a historical site or something like that, you know, actually showing them and telling them, what do you think about this? You know, what do you think about what's your idea? You know, try to let them to speak, try to let them to uh, like to talk so that you can understand their perspective from where they are. From there, you can be able to tackle it, you know, to tackle whatever issues that you're facing. 
But if you just feel like, you know, they need to know these things, you know, I want them to change, I want them to see, see things from my perspective, then, you know, it will be too much on them. So it is one step at a time and, you know, little by little. That, that's how I do it. Okay, wow. Thank you so much. I love how you mentioned that you, you challenge them to think for themselves because I feel like the system we grew up in especially makes us afraid to question what you are taught. It's like you're not allowed to question, especially yes. like I grew up in a Christian household. Like you you cannot question the Bible. You cannot be questioning what the pastor is teaching you because you're doing the wrong thing. You're sinning. I almost felt guilty for not believing some of the things they say you know as if i'm doing something wrong so i guess that builds up um the habit in them of questioning things you know of using their own brains and also learning from nature at the same time because then they have proof right in front of them um of the things around us so yeah thank thank you so much looking forward to also seeing more from your channel thank you very much wonderful brother gilbert your last your last words and then we'll have brothers here yeah, thank, thank you again once more. Uh, I just want to say thank you to our sister, especially this this point with, with the kids, uh, teaching them how to ask questions. And we ourselves, uh, uh, the, the older ones, so to say, also learn ourselves to ask questions and never be satisfied with an answer. Keep asking keep asking keep asking that's the solution keep asking question everything that's just all i want to say thank you for mentioning that thank you very much thank wow, you, wonderful yes what is it here yeah thank you very much brother Abia. Yeah, sister thank you very much for your time and um you know sharing your energy with us and your your attitude as well and um yeah, hopefully we can learn from you as well, and uh, we look forward to engaging with you going forward. So uh, the one who comes to teach is always welcome, and uh, positive energy, uh, creation energy to you and to everyone on the call. Thank you. Wonderful. But a piece, you can, you can say something in a minute, and then like your question, you say it, and then Miss Chinari will, will end the session for us. Yeah, but a piece. Um... Yes, brother, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Majorly, my question has been asked by this by sister um, because I wanted to talk about the children. That what approach do you think is best for the children? Because um, my community, my group, that we want to focus on the kids, like catching them young and letting them know about Africa before they teach them about the um, the European stuff in school. So, and that has just been answered. So I just want to appreciate. I love what you're doing. I the fact that you're a female and you're doing this, and you are even from Calabar. <laughs> um, no, sorry no, to say. No, no, I'm not <laughs> Calabar. I'm from um, Rivers State. Are you from Lagos? Rivers. Rivers. Oh, Rivers. Oh, I actually did my NYS in Akwaibom. Oh, okay. I the national service I did in I so. Um, I think it's very close to River State. So, um, in short, I love what you're doing, and I'm cheering you. We are cheering you at Zula Band too, and we really love you. And I would like, really love to like to support you as Bravi, as you are supporting Bravi. Thank, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Miss 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 we, we, we love you so much, Zula Band too, and we're looking forward to work with you. Any message that you have to ask before we go? Sorry, yes, I was asking, I was saying thank you so much for joining us. We love you so much as well, Bantu. We wanted to, uh, to really have you here and let you know that uh, we, we support what you do and uh, we love what you're doing. And any last message for the Africans out there who are watching you before we, we, we go? Yeah, um, my message to Africans is that I want you to understand that um, you're Africans first before any other thing, before any other name, James, John, or whatever, you know, you're being called. And you should be proud of your African traditional names. You should be proud of being African and not be ashamed of it because that is who you are. 
you cannot, you know, it doesn't matter how your accent sounds, it doesn't matter how you try to dress and look like every other person, you remain African and you always be seen as African because that's who you are. You cannot run away from yourself or from your shadow. And another thing I want to say is we should start seeing Africa as our home because if we don't see Africa as our home, strangers will come here and do whatever they like. We should make sure we put strangers on check, you know, and we should not all the time or we should not think that it is none of my business. We should always make it our business and keep our eyes down as Africans and be very, very responsible and accountable, especially with our actions. You know, we let a lot of things to slide. We should be able to hold each other accountable in all reality, in all aspects. You know, I do believe that people should hold me accountable. You know, and um, I hold, I, I am definitely going to hold you accountable if you're my friend or if you're close to me and stuff like that, because that's how we can grow and make changes. So we must be responsible, hold each other accountable for our actions, and, and so to say. So let's, you know, um, build together, collaborate together, work to the, work together. Group economies is the way forward. And if we can do this, we can actually change um, uh, Africa as a whole. And then we should see and educate ourselves from an African perspective, listen to Africans, you know, listen to platforms like this, you know, to Zola Bantu, he's doing an amazing job, you know, keep supporting him, don't get tired because there's a lot of us, the, the journey I do believe is, um, is a very lonely one, you know, sometimes you feel like giving up and all of that because when you turn your back, it's difficult, no one is standing there, you know, but when something happened or, you know, perhaps you're dead or something, this is what we are good at. Then we want to talk about this person. Oh, that's when they want to share the video. Oh, that's when they want to appreciate them. Why appreci appreciate the dead? When right now you can appreciate them, send them a message, you know, support them in any way that you can now that they're leaving. That includes to your parents or anybody that you truly, that you love and then you're, you're around with. Show them appreciation. Let them feel loved around you right now that they're leaving. You know, do everything that you would want to do for them. Do it right now. So support this channel and every other person's channel that is on the uh, panel today. And I really appreciate you, uh, Brother Zola Bantu, for having me on your platform. I'm thrilled to be here. It is really refreshing to have this conversation with our brothers and sisters all over. And I want to say thank you very much. I appreciate it. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much. That will be all for today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you until next time. We'll end the session with a really beautiful song. It's a French song, actually, by Mama Feza Shamamba. She's speaking about Af Africa. The lyrics. <laughs> Contre moi, j'ai essayé de me libérer de vous pour les rêver, les contre moi.